Hi everyone, Teresa Gregorio here, uh, coming to you with the morning doves hanging around in my backyard to talk about this week's Knit Petite project post. And this is the first in a four-week run where we're going to be looking at diagnosing fit issues. And I thought that was a very good and practical place to start because if we don't know what it is we want to change, then how can we figure out what to change and how to change it. Uh, some of you, this may be old news, you may be very well aware of what your fit issues are and why um, things fit the way they do, but I wanted to start here um, because, well, I'll share a story with you this week and you can go on and, and read it, but briefly I'll let you know. Uh, I mean, I wasn't born knowing how things fit my body and, versus how they should fit, if that makes sense. One of the interesting pieces of information that I came across in my research in the sizing and clothing um, in textbook was they're questioning the efficacy of creating extremely um, narrow target market segments of sizing, and they uh, used, for example, plus-size women, uh, because plus-size women are so used to essentially being served sizes that don't suit them or fit them or don't really fit the way they're intended to. That's just what those women are used to clothes looking like on their bodies. So in some cases may not realize or they've like innately accepted that that's the way clothes fit. Um, and that's kind of, in a way, uh, what happened to me is that I didn't realize that things uh, were fitting me in a way that indicated uh, there were certain things about my body that were petite and they were smaller or shaped differently than the design assumed that it was. The way that I realized that is because, like I said, I sort of innately accepted all of the clothes that I ever bought in my adult life, the way they fit me. I didn't see, I literally didn't notice or see that they were fitting me in, um, in a way that indicated I needed to make adjustments. I only noticed it when I started to make my own clothes, put them on, looked in the mirror, and realized that they were gaping in certain places or pulling in other places. And because I was being critical of my own skill and I thought that I had made mistakes, it sent me back to looking at the clothes that I had always been wearing for years and years. And I realized that the fit issues were consistent, right? So the clothes I bought in the store gave me the same fit issues as the things that I had just sewn or knit for myself. So that's how I realized that I have to really learn to diagnose fit issues because if I just am accepting things or I don't even know, I don't even realize what it is that's fitting me in a way uh, that I ultimately am not happy with, uh, you've got to start somewhere. So the next four weeks have broken that down. So this week we're talking about uh, shoulders, arms, and back measurements. Now, of course, everything is tied together. Uh, our human bodies are... Uh, all, it's all connected to each other and different sizes and shapes and lengths and widths and circumferences will affect each other. Uh, but I tried to break it down into pieces so that it can help you to think about, to begin to think about um, why something fits you the way it does. Uh, I've included a few illustrations that may help you to see um, like, oh, but maybe that's why my neckline is always gaping or maybe that's my, my shoulder seam is always, you know, falling off my arm. Just to get you thinking about that. Uh, in the next few weeks, we'll be touching on different uh, parts of the body, and then in June, we're going to get into like the actual tactics and tools that we can use to diagnose that. But for this week, I wanted to introduce you to that to you, and I wanted to encourage you, if perhaps this is old news to you, you're already a fit expert, wonderful. If you would like to head over to the Knit Petite Project Ravelry Group, brand new, I've created a thread there, and I'll put a link uh, below. Uh, so that we can have experts and we can have people asking questions to go there and uh, share information and learn from each other because I only found that I really understood what some of my fit issues were when I had a human being, an expert, someone who knew something about fit, look at me, look at the thing I was knitting or wearing and tell me, well, maybe you might want to look into sloping shoulders, you might want to look into narrow back, blah, 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 blah. Because their eyes were more objective than my own, uh, more studied than my own, just knew more than I did, it was super helpful. So I hope that that thread can be that for us all. So if you have questions, you can go there. If you are a uh, fit expert, you're someone who knows a little bit more about it, you can go there too and lend a hand. It would be much appreciated. And uh, last thing before we go for this evening is the question of the week. And uh, what I would like to do is actually... Um, 
start to lay some foundation for a read-along if that's something that we might be interested in doing because in my research for this week's post uh, I relied pretty heavily on this sewing book to be honest it's called Fit for Real People and this is one of those books that was recommended to me by somebody in the Knit Petite Project so thank you for the recommendation because it's super helpful it's um, a very simple illustrations um, that I think can be applied for us knitters. That's something that we'll go into a little bit more in July, talking about how sewing can teach knitters things. But this book, Fit for Real People, one of the things that it does is go into detail in suggesting how you can try to be objective about the shape of your body by getting a friend, getting a partner of some sort, to help you create a body graph. It's what they call a body graph. It's essentially a life-size tracing, but it's a pretty complex tracing where you are um, selecting f uh, certain landmarks of your body and measuring from point to point, and you create a, a like an actual life-size essentially tracing of your body. So they go over the details of doing that in here and it occurred to me that that might be really interesting, really fun, uh, really useful activity for us to get into if we want to do a read-along. So all of that is to say, if you're interested in a read-along, let me know. And if you'd like to do a read-along, I might suggest something like this on the list. I don't know if it'll be the top of the list. We can vote on that stuff, but that's my question. I'm asking about a read-along, and I'm asking about what you might think about doing a, a body graph to get that kind of objectivity when you're looking at your own shape and how you can um, alter things to suit that shape or your own tastes. So thanks for tuning in. As always, if you have any questions, comments, uh, anything you think I have missed in this post, which is certainly possible, it's not... Uh, it's not a 1,000 page textbook. It's uh, fairly skimming to get you to think about diagnosing fit issues for your uh, shoulders, back, and arms. So if I've missed something super crucial, let me know, please. Uh, it's something we should add. I uh, want to make sure we serve as many people as possible and try and touch on as many bases as possible so that we can really start thinking together about how to make patterns fit our own bodies. Uh, if you want to get in touch with me, I'm Canary Knits pretty much everywhere across all the social media. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you over the next uh, few weeks, the rest of the weeks of May, where we'll be talking about uh, the different length measurements, the different circumference measurements. And at the end of the month, I've got a bit of a special treat for you all, and I'm going to keep that one to myself for now. So looking forward to seeing you next week, and I hope you have a great evening. Thanks, everyone.